Rise ye ashen, tarnished, chosen, undead. Welcome, Souls fans, new and old, to the next installment of our Dark Souls Remastered Platinum Guide. So, we are in the painted world of Ariamis. In our last video, we got 10 souvenir of reprisal via the bird farm. And we also got our intelligence to 18. I also had enough souls afterwards from the bird farm to get strength to 25. And we are now wielding the great sword of Artorias plus 4. So at this point we can take off covetous gold ring, put back on the real step protection, and just preemptively put some blooming moss clumps on. What you can do as well is utilize some leftover fire bombs. Um, so there are some flame spewing brains, I guess is the closest I can uh, akin what they look like. Um, these enemies, when you defeat them, they emit a toxic gas, literally toxic, uh, which can cause toxic buildup. I come up here, as you're familiar with these first three. However, we are now going to go up these stairs. Once you get close, there he is. Headshots do good damage. Just be mindful if he is not stuck on this corner, he's going to continue to spam that fireball and it does a fair chunk of damage. Um, there is a flame torch wielding one here who will not spam fireball. But there's that toxic mist, so just be careful, um, and you may need to heal toxic if you get caught by it. Around here, this is the hollow that dropped on your head earlier. We're going to out-archer this archer, spam attack, and you should always outpace his arrow so he'll never get to attack. Actually, no. Excuse me, sir. Do you mind? Actually, we'll cut that down. Okay, next area in here is somewhat concerning. Just be prepared. You may just have to face the fact that you get toxic. As you can see, there are numerous of these enemies and unless you hit them just right with the tippy tip of your sword as you've seen there odds are you're going to get toxic uh, that was unfortunate that you dropped down as soon as you get toxic just make sure you use a heal normally what you can do is get away with uh hitting those top two. If you hit them in the head, then uh, as you see you get to do that nice 70 damage. Keep it safe, keep it simple. Right, with that done, we're going to come chop this down for later. There's the phalanx, we'll be dealing with them later. Jump across here for a soul of the brave warrior. And then, don't panic if you don't get this item, it's an egg vermifuge. We don't need that again because we don't need to become an egghead anymore. Come here, you can't actually attack this one, so it's not like in the uh, initial underberg area where you are able to, under Parashali, where you were able to knock them before they climb, climb up. Not able to do so. Right, that is the next item we're going to get, is the Blood Shield. And for this, you're going to need to be prepared to run. 
because that zombie dragon is going to come alive as soon as you get to blood shield. So here we go. Blood shield, run. Do not look back, do not pass go, do not bother wasting time killing him. All unnecessary. Once you've got the blood shield, which is one of your items required for the Knights on a trophy, you're going to come here and traverse the white light. Here is Phalanx. So, two hand your weapon. Once they spawn like that, you're going to get into the meat, to the side, and you're going to do a running swing. The reason you have to go to the side is those shields are very effective at nullifying your damage. As you can see there, the difference between 37 and 300, and, well, 300 plus change. There you go, 500 souls for each. So quick to be able to get so many souls. And all we're going to do now, we're going to open this door here, and that's our shortcut back to the bonfire. Now, before we go back to the bonfire, we're going to do some housekeeping here. We are going to spawn an invasion if you are uh, unhollowed. If you are not unhollowed, so if you're not in human form, go back to the bonfire, reverse your hollowing, come in here, get your stamina up, kill the phalanx, and then afterwards come back here. But you need to be in human form uh, to get invaded. We are going to let these hollows trigger us no more than two at a time, just to keep things simple. Once we go to those two items down there, we are now in the range where we can spawn the invader. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come up. We're going to try and quickly two-hand swing. Don't give him a chance. If he does, Keep the two hand pressure on. Um, he's going to use pyromancy. Grab some humanity. Grab the notched whip. Not necessary. Uh, so you don't have to pick up the notched whip. But what we do need to do now, come around here, grab acid surge. That is our fourth of 19 pyromancies. And as you can see, uh, we've got quite a nice chunk of souls for doing that as well. So with that, we're going to come back to the bonfire. I'm going to repair, that is optional for you. And we're going to keep going our strength towards 30. And now what we're going to do is we are going to soul farm. We're going to use the phalanx and we're going to farm some souls. So come here, kill this guy, kill these two. That's already a thousand souls. Uh, uh, don't need to worry about equipment really. Two hand weapon. Come here, let your stamina come up, and then let the phalanx drop. Run to the side. Run around. And all we're doing is just avoiding hitting them head on where the shield is. There we go. Let's run. I run back to the bonfire. I don't know what's quicker, running back or using homeward. Um, but I tend to run back. And there you go. You look at that. Three of those and that's a level.
in to the side. Round. There we go. Nice and easy. Uh, so I think actually I, I'll keep this as a shorter video. So what I'm going to do is once I get my... To make this easier for you and less tedious for you if you're watching along, uh, I'm going to keep doing the farm on this video. Um, and I will end the video once I've got my strength to 30 and my vitality to 22. Uh, and then I'll actually do the rest of Painted World and the next bit of... Uh, wep uh, weapon upgrading. We'll do that in the next video separately. I think that's the best way of doing it, rather than doing the farm in the middle of a video, so that you're then going to have to go, okay, well, where do I skip to? Even though I put it in the comments. Don't worry about their items. The only items that they'll drop are their spears and their shields. Uh, the shield they drop is the lar large leather shield even though it doesn't look like it. So we have no use for those. Um, it's just extra item clogging in your menu, essentially. Twenty-eight. Four levels to go. So yeah, this is the only soul farming that we're going to do um, is in this painted world area. So we're soul farming here to get our level up. Um, just so that it's just going to make it so much easier having the extra strength um, for stat scaling, but also the extra health as well. And then once we've finished with Painted World, including after we've defeated uh, Crossbreed Priscilla, we're going to... Actually, no, we'll probably do it before we fight her. Uh, it just means we're going to fight her with a bunch of souls on us. Um, we're going to use this farm so that we can get up to... We're going to need about 100,000 souls. Um before we leave here. Don't worry, it's not all going to come from the farm. Uh, we are go we've got two more areas to clear. And that's where all the souls that we get from those areas are going to go to as well. But yeah, apologies, I know it's a bit tedious, however, in terms of having the souls you need at the right time, this is by far the most efficient way of getting those. Three more levels to go. So what, nine more runs? Ten, maybe. But in terms of souls you get for time it takes, um, I mean, it's no demon souls. But that's in a league of its own in terms of soul farming. Um, but this is still not that bad. It's not difficult. I swung my sword once 
And I got 2,000 souls. I'm going to pick up the items in this area on the next video once we've done with the farm. So yeah, I guess we can talk a little bit about, uh, in previous video, I mentioned that we, that we don't talk to the Frampt and that we are going to talk to Kath or Keith um, in our second playthrough. Um, I guess we can talk about the fact that you know, we've uh, also defeated uh, Guinevere and Gwendolyn. Uh, and I mentioned a few times about the Gwyn's, you know, Gwyn, Lord of Sindra, uh, Guinevere, Gwendolyn, um, and the Lords, Grave Lord Nito, and the like. Um, essentially all born from the Age of Fire. So, you know, you have your bonfires, um, yeah, the idea is that it was the Age of Dragons before the Age of Man. Uh, and the dragons, the world was essentially all grey. Um, and the dragons were considered immortal thanks to their mighty scales. Uh, no one could oppose them. Uh, so there was a time of peace, because it had to be, because it was a tyrannical rule of the dragons. Uh, no one could oppose them. However, amongst the Grey, then, and they don't really explain how it happened, but there spawned the first fire. And fire introduced the Age of Fire, the Age of Man, and the Age of Humanity. So there we go, strength up to 30, two more into vitality, and we're done with the farm. So with the fire, what certain humans in Gwyn definitely managed to find was be that between fire and humanity um, you were able to essentially fuse your soul uh, to gain great power. So Gwyn, the Pygmy, Nito um, all started to seek souls in their quest for power. And in doing so, they got powers themselves. They got their Lord Souls. So, with this, they were able to use this power to start fighting back against the dragons. Uh, importantly, Seath the Scaleless, which is a dragon that we're going to fight later on, one of the great lords, an honorary great lord realistically, as not human. Um, Seath the Scaleless, which was essentially shunned by all the other dragons because he didn't have scales and that's what made them all immortal. Seath betrayed the dragons and told mankind how to get past the scales that were, you know, creating this invulnerability situation for the dragons. And the key secret was Gwyn's lightning. So using Gwyn's lightning and Le Nito's newfound uh, uh, Lord Soul, which gave him the power of the curse, um, they actually defeated the dragons, and so began the Age of Men. And as we've seen in Orlando, we saw the illusion of it when it was in its prime. And the reason for this illusion is uh, once man started to reach its pinnacle and the great lords had a great time ruling over everything with their great lord power, what happened was the fires started to dwindle and the pygmy and his Lord Soul, the Dark Soul, or the Dark Sign, as it's also known, um, started to usher in the next age, the Age of Dark. 
Gwen, as you can imagine, not wanting to give up his power and his position, um, has done everything in his power to prevent that age of darkness from rising. So, vitality to 21, one more level to go. So, what Gwyn did is he continued to seek greater souls and humanity to continue to kindle bonfires. Um, so by kindling a bonfire, you are offering it humanity, you're offering it the essence of a person, a, a human being, um, to make that bonfire stronger. And in doing so, clutching on to that last chance of keeping the Age of Fire alive. So, what Gwyn has essentially done a few times now is offering great souls of specific chosen undead, uh, not unlike ourselves. What they do is they use those chosen undead, those great souls, those who have fought, uh, those who have gotten strong. They then offer their souls to rekindle the first fire, the one that sparked in that initial cave, which we will see at the end of the game. And by doing so, we prolong the age of fire uh, for as long as we can, and the cycle of the game that we are playing will forever continue. A chosen undead will rise, um, and then they will move to Lordran. They will then go on this mighty quest through Anor Londo. Um, they will defeat the great lords, gaining more and more power on the way. Uh, and then, at the end, they will then sacrifice themselves to rekindle the first flame, which then starts it all off again. The great lords get spawned, a chosen undead will appear, yada yada yada. It is believed that this whole prophecy of the chosen undead that is supposed to usurp Gwen actually is his idea because it keeps his soul essentially resurrecting. It keeps the Age of Fire going. Um, it's essentially keeping evolution, mankind, and everything else in a state of perpetual uh, cycle. All this preventing the Age of Dark, uh, the Dark Souls, the Age of the Chosen Hollows from coming to be. Um, so we then, in our second playthrough, are going to choose the second ending, which is where we refuse to rekindle the first flame, and instead we usher in the Age of Dark. Um, but that is a story for another time, for we have got our level where we need it to be. We got our strength to 30, vitality to 22. So, with that, we are now going to end this video, and in the next video we're going to finish off uh, this area. I know I said that in the last video, that we're going to finish off the painted world, however it just makes sense because there's a farm, I want it to be something that you can skip if you want. So in the next video we're going to finish the painted world, we are then going to do a smaller amount of farming before leaving the painted world and doing our next set of boss weapon prep. So hopefully you're enjoying uh, playing along, um, hopefully I haven't uh, bastardised the Law of Souls too, too much, and I'll see you all in the next video.